In this week's podcast, Kyle and Jared sit down with Tuttle Twins creator Connor Boyack and executive producer of the Tuttle Twins TV show Daniel Harmon to talk about the next exciting season of Tuttle Twins. Well, thanks guys for coming in. Thanks for having us. Thank awesome. you for having us. This is fun. Yeah. So, Tuttle Twins season two. Is this going to be like, is this going to be as good of a jump in quality as Parks and Recreation season one to two? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was quite the jump. That was a dramatic jump. <laughs> or, I'm trying to think of, what was a show that had a bad season two? Um, was a, well, like, who jumped the shark right away? Like, I was like, uh, yeah, I, I think it battled Star Galactica, but that was like season three to season four was the yeah. big drop off. Yeah, Lost? Was Lost Lane in season two? I think Lost got better. Okay, Jericho. Continue. Did you guys ever see Jericho? No, Jericho they didn't even a, finish season okay, two. Okay, so Jericho and Homestead. Yeah. Kind of a similar concept. Mm. You guys are coming out with another. It's Angel Studios is Angel trying Studios to find. Angel Studios, yeah. Uh, we, Homestead. We are not. <laughs> you guys are not personally. <laughs> no. Not but personally. yeah, but that's. We will that's take awesome. your money if you want yeah. to give it. <laughs> Here, take my. <laughs> so getting so, back to the original yeah. question of the yeah. drop off, right? Well, going, <laughs> getting back to going the question to of Lost we Season 2. They Lost brought in that two. annoying chick in Lost Season 2. Which one was she? She was the... Uh, I'm trying to remember. And, uh, it, it what's together. her name? Uh, uh, Mi- she was, Michelle Rodriguez. The one. Uh, Michelle yeah. Rodriguez. She plays the same character and super everything. Super tough. Like that. Yeah. She's always like super tough. Yo, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take you down. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Pomona. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what, that's, that was actually a line from Tom the show. Tom Cruise always <laughs> plays the same character, but that works, right? Tom yeah. Cruise is always yeah. the same guy. It's, well, just, Michelle, a, yeah. it's, like, it's like a trying too hard. <laughs> Isn't is Michelle in uh, Dungeons and Dragons? She is. And yeah. She plays the same yeah, character. She plays the same character. Yeah. She's like, she's still like a. She's got a few more wrinkles now, but she's the exact same character. She's like super urban. She looks like she's put on some muscle. The hard-edged uh, yeah. mercenary with the <laughs> heart of gold. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons gold. was fun. It was. It was. Yeah. I haven't seen I it yet. You know, I was so surprised because I saw D&D in theaters, and then I saw Mario in theaters. And it's like, no wokeness, no weird stuff. Yeah. I'm like, two movies in a row. Is something changing? What's the message? Like, um, did they get the message? Or <laughs> like, well, and then Cleopatra is getting like 1% <laughs> Rotten Tomato, you know, <laughs> reviews. And so maybe oh. the message is starting to sink in. I yeah. don't know. Maybe. That's interesting. Although, I mean, you look at the children's entertainment, you know, it's you look different. at Transformers just came out with an episode where yeah. apparently robot computers have, you know, pronouns and they're no longer binary. And <laughs> you, you look at all the kids' they don't content call it and Transformers and, for nothing. You, oh, my God. I, I just see it's, a lot it's of. It's been in there the whole time. <laughs> they're just yeah. going back to their Underneath, origin. There you go. <laughs> just feels like there's a lot of activism, you know, in that type of media. And it's so funny how cringy it is because it comes off like a bad diversity training video, mm-hmm. you know, where they're like, actually, my pronouns are they them right oh i apologize i didn't realize that like that's yeah. literally the dialogue yeah. in this yeah that's right every time it's, it's so bad i will try to do better <laughs> I will listen as a robot my apologies my well i feel like and that's i feel like that's how christian movies used to be like mm-hmm. ham-fisted just very kind of yeah like overt. looking at you like so do you accept yeah. jesus <laughs> and i, I don't feel like i metaphors. feel like it's way more on the other side now but yeah we're getting better yeah yeah hopefully they're getting right. worse <laughs> so season two, what are we talking yeah. about? Are we talking? So right. speaking of children's right. children's entertainment, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that, that isn't discussing. like pushing anything at all. I mean, except for freedom. But anyway, pushing no, the right stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But no, yeah, season two, we're hoping the the quality is increasing, and that that's what we're going for. And early indicators are that people are really resonating with the content. Especially, mm-hmm. we just did an episode on Bitcoin. And awesome. it rent, rent, went really well. Yeah, blew up all over, you know, yeah. Twitter and um, and TikTok and Instagram. Cool. And so we've had a lot of virality with it. And one of our favorite comments is a guy who's like, I've been trying to explain this thing to my wife for like 7,000 hours. And you guys did in 20 minutes what I couldn't do yeah. in 7,000 hours. I need to watch this to understand. Yeah. It was a hard one. <laughs> it was hard in the writer's room to figure that one out. Everyone was like, this Super is like hard. the hardest one Wait a minute, done. this doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. <laughs> the most complex episode we've ever done. And the director and I, so Tyler, the director, and I, when we were fin- when we were finishing the episode or the animatic, which is what you deliver to the animation house for them to do the animation. So it's the collection of storyboards and everything that's put together. And like, here you go, go and animate this. When we were, Putting the finishing touches on that, we were literally like, I don't know if anybody's going to understand a word of this. <laughs> we're like, hopefully the, hopefully the parents get it at least, you know, and maybe get some discussion going. But we were just like, oh, man, our kids going to understand this. But we have been hearing that, like, oh, yeah. kids are really understanding and Getting asking it. their parents for, like, to be paid in Bitcoin for, like, yeah. mowing the lawn. My allowance and Satoshi's. Doing, yeah. <laughs> Brainwashing the children with the Bitcoin message. Yeah, that's so funny. Well, the Fed, it's interesting because that's the Tuttle Twins is really good at this. Like, they take these high concepts. 
I, I love the Tuttle Twins. My kids watch it multiple times. I was telling you guys before. Uh, they take these massive concepts of government, Federal Reserve, that kind of stuff, and they make it into really understandable um, like episodes. So at the very end, you do really have an understanding. Uh, what was it? The one? It, so the federal aren't let the federal the monster Reserve, the yeah. federal the inflation Reserve monster. Mon the inflation monster. Yeah, and I, it's, you guys made a, a book out of that. You made like a graphic novel out of that. My kids have that too. Yeah, and uh, that was like the OG man. That's so good. That was OG. That was like first season. That was one of the episode ones. two or something. Like that. Yeah. Episode, episode six. It was, it was one episode of the first six. Yeah. Episode episode six. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was based off of the, yeah, yeah, back in 2015 yeah. or something. I'm a bit like of a hipster. I liked it before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. <laughs> Street <laughs> grid over here. Yeah, that's right. An OG. The, uh, <laughs> the fascinating thing for me is, so I I started all this before Tuttle Twins running a think tank, a nonprofit trying to like educate voters about why we should limit government or whatever. And it was always so difficult because adults are very set in their ways. It's very hard to like change your your guys' worldview or any of our worldviews. And so what we found when we started in the Tuttle Twins years later is it was such a creative and impactful way to reach the adults, many of whom would tell us, the parents, like, hey, I got these books for my kids, but I'm learning stuff that I'd never learned before in school. And I'm having these aha moments. And so I started to realize back in 2014, 15, 16, like, this is such a, a helpful way to even reach the adults. Yeah, we want to teach children both through books and through the cartoon, but we're finding that like entire families are starting to warm up to these ideas of a free society because we're doing it at like a super simplified level. Yeah. yeah. It's helpful. It's yeah, it's, I mean, good. it gives the parents ammunition. And like you said, it helps them articulate something that maybe they've, they've believed in all along, but now they can finally explain it to their kids mm. and actually have a kind of critical thinking conversation around the dinner table with it. So it's been Well, it's I been mean, great. attempts to do stuff like this in school are always boring. Like, who remembers their economics class fondly? And like, I'm so <laughs> glad for all the things that I learned there, right? But when you do it through storytelling and humor and everything else, like these lessons sink in, the kids are getting it. I had a, a dad write me recently. He was at the grocery store with his nine-year-old daughter. They're walking down the chip aisle, and suddenly he turns to his side, and she's not there. She stopped back at the potato chips, and her mouth is just open, and she's staring at these potato chips. Dad's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I get it now. I get spontaneous order. And this is an <laughs> economic principle in one of our books where – you don't have a potato chip president this or czar or <laughs> this is important. Uh, <laughs> light bulb. Somebody, somebody you know? write this down. And this dad is like, <laughs> or she was hungry. <laughs> yeah. But the dad was just amazed that like this daughter who read a story now sees in action in the grocery store that there's a bajillion types of potato chips and this is spontaneous order. There's no central planning. There's no quotas and it's just abundance through the free market. And the dad was like, department of potato chips. <laughs> we, could, we could do it. Don't give Biden any ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It would fix things up real good. <laughs> yeah. <in that>. yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> lacking the potato chip diversity. For school president, needed. I will have yeah. potato chips. In department every of humor. Yeah. <laughs> so there's so many things. Bernie Sanders wanted the department of deodorant. Do you remember that? No. He was he was upset because he was like, <laughs> "You're he, saying this with a straight face, like well, this is I'm a real being thing." A little facetious, but, <laughs> but he's he had some tweet where he was ranting about how there's way too many um, varieties of deodorant at the store. Like we don't need 18 varieties of deodorant. That's why you go to Costco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you only get like two Jesus. varieties. It was yeah, such a, <laughs> like we need to send him some Tuttle Twins. Episodes. Well, I think books, yeah. you guys did a, an article on that years ago where Bernie was like, "Stop oh, sending me all right. these economic books." And he had, <laughs> I think it was a Thomas book. yeah, it's Thomas Sowell's book. And then in there was a paragraph about. And then they keep sending me all these children's books. <laughs> so what's funny is in a couple of months we're actually launching a campaign designed to send a Tuttle Twins book to your least favorite congressman oh, that's <laughs> because these are written for kids age five to ten and members of Congress. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so who fun. needs this information? <laughs> exactly. <That's right. laughs> There's pictures. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pictures. You don't even have to read it. So you know, that's easy, interesting. even a congressman. Understand. <laughs> you know what's great about the Tuttle Twins too, though, is like obviously the the information's great, but you guys are really funny. Like this is a, I mean, and we know funny, but like this is funny. Like you guys, Thank it's you. it's on par with the Phineas and Ferbs of the world. We were saying earlier, my kids love it because it's funny. I mean, it's no Bluey. It's no Bluey. It's no Bluey. We'll get Let's there. just, you know. Bluey's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bluey's fantastic. Now, do you guys watch a lot of children's cartoons? Is that is that how you get your information? I do. <laughs> I do a fair amount. I delegate yeah. that to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for for us as writers, and um, when I say us as writers, I mean the primary writers are all have experience in either stand-up or sketch writing or in improv improv or sometimes sometimes all three 
And so they're bringing that comedic background to, to the table. They have the comedic timing and are very experienced in that way. And um, we're drawing from inspirations like, you know, The Simpsons and Phineas and Ferb and Gravity Falls and Bluey and uh, Rick and Morty. That's less my cup of tea, <laughs> more, more some of the other writers. But a um, little warning for the homeschoolers. Yeah, exactly. Hey, disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed with caution. <laughs> um, but essentially, yeah, we've been inspired by really great cartoons and um, kind of it's it's the the vision for the show has it's turned out to be a little bit kind of like what George Lucas did with Star Wars, where he was kind of pulling from all these different artistic sources like the Flash Gordon series and the the samurai films and the westerns and all these things and kind of putting it together in this one, you know, new new thing that we now know as Star Wars. Um, it's a, essentially, upon reflection, that's a little bit of what we've done with Tuttle Twins, where we're pulling a little bit from like the magic school bus and a little bit from Schoolhouse Rock and a little bit from the Simpsons and Simpsons and Phineas and Ferb and all these favorites of ours and and kind of making this show that's family friendly, that um, the kids can enjoy with their parents. And hopefully a lot of the humor really hits for the adults because we're writing it for us as much as we are, you know, for the kids. And so that's been really fun to kind of see the parents are like. This this is more clever and funny than it has any right to be. We, know, like, <laughs> we hear true. those kinds of things. And in all terms the time. of quality, is it more uh, Phantom Menace or original trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> we'll as long go as you're gonna with the original to trilogy. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> there is only one. Although there's a very quotable line in the Fa Phantom Menace that I use all the time is when we get something to work in an edit, I'm like, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say it all the time. Oh, Josh. Yeah, yeah a little Josh. The, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. That's a good one. Yeah. And yeah. An now this is pod racing. Yeah, like, no, that's a good. Now this is pod racing. It's <laughs> uh, funny because he's not. Annie! He's, he's that's not the only pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> the one I quote is uh, when Padme is in the Senate or whatever, as it's being transformed to the the first galactic empire, and everyone's and like, I, "Yeah!" And she says, "So this is how liberty dies with thunderous applause." Democracy um, dies, but yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so, yeah. Actually, Democracy. January. No. It was January sixth on that day, right? That Padme <laughs> yeah. was doing that. Democracy dies, but yeah. So this is how liberty dies. It's Democracy on. dies, but yeah. yeah. Exactly. So this is how liberty dies. With thunderous applause. <laughs> I like how, how clumsy Lucas was as a, as a screenwriter. You know, because the original trilogy, he had a lot of help screenwriting. And then later on, he didn't take advice. And so when he writes that line, it's like, it's a powerful moment in the movie. And then he has to say it. Like, I'm like, you don't have to say it. Yeah. Like, but we can Show see it. that this is what's happening. It, yeah. So like, she looks at the camera. So this is democracy. <laughs> like, well, we, got, you, we got it. We got yeah, it. These, <laughs> it's a good quote for Connor. Just well, leave you get it be. These, like, you get these Oscar worthy, you know, like uh, these Oscar actors and they're yeah. in there and they're just awful. Yeah. Right. Because the dialogue's so bad. It's so funny. It's hard for them to work. Poor Hayden, you know. Well, but there are good actors in Tuttle Twins, I hear. There are. There's one in our presence, I hear. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's one good I mean, actor. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I mean, not Oscar. Yeah. Who is your favorite character, and why is it George Washington or the mayor? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jared voiced some characters. Two. Two characters. Two characters. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's Future great. Oscar winner Jared. Lemester. Yeah, right. that's right. <laughs> yeah, so fun. Yeah, I, I play. Um, I play George Washington. Uh, in an upcoming episode, which is coming out in June. Can and we hear your George Washington? I think I did it like this. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember. It was in that neighborhood. Yeah, it was yeah, somewhere. Sure. Yeah, it's like yeah. you're selling Cutco knives. <laughs> <laughs> no, George yeah. Washington was a Cutco Here knife I am. Yeah. I'm George Washington. It sounds very historical. To yeah. like it's almost like a Charlton Heston esque kind it's of thing. It's a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that a vibe. Masala. Let my people go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, yeah, Jared's got a lot of voices, and yeah, it was really. <laughs> really really cool to kind of plug him in there to uh, to George Washington it's it's an important episode too because that one's on tribalism right and so it's all about how we should be seeking after truth and not after what our team is into or our tribe and so it's a little bit of a commentary on you know the political parties and critical thinking and i mean George Washington was a great example of that obviously because mm -hmm. you know his farewell speech he really warned about the dangers of you know people falling into tribes and he had cabinet members, right, and stuff that were kind of getting into that yeah. group thing, tribalism. kind of to that yep. tribalism. And he right. was, um, he was kind of, he saw way into our future and was like, "This is going to be bad." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. so it was in his farewell letter that he said he warned of the spirit of party because he was seeing even within, letter, yeah, when his own cabinet, where you'd have that divisiveness, just 
degrading things and you read that in retrospect and you're like oh my gosh this is like to a t what exactly we're yeah. saying today like, luckily we listened to him <laughs> yeah, no, right. didn't follow I know. Him. well what a message that Implement we need he didn't have the voice like you to <laughs> yeah. really you know let it yeah, carry his voice, his voice is probably you know <laughs> yeah. so I'm george, nobody ever adventures. listens to me i'm george washington <laughs> <That's right>. yeah, <laughs> well, so, yeah, we'll jump into some questions in a second here but the, it says the, f- the first season was a big hit 15 million views after it was crowdfunded and produced yeah. Uh, almost 5 million sold of the Tuttle Twins books. Yeah. Does that sound, sound right? And there's yeah. a new Tuttle yeah. textbook coming out. I got this one on my shelf. My kids flipped through it. Woohoo. Uh, this is the. This is volume two. Volume two, which I don't have yet. That's awesome. And you're going to give cool. that to me? Yeah, this is your gift. Okay. This Thank is you. the price, <laughs> price of me it's being on record. here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I got to get cool. the complete set here. But uh, these are what? These are more junior high, high school age? These are like age high six school. to 12, something like that. They're still like storybook level, just like the main books. But the reason we started doing our first one last year and now the second one was I bought a whole bunch of uh, social studies textbooks that are used in the schools trying to see mm. how are they teaching about like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the right. Revolution. And as you might recall from your own schooling experience, all these books were insanely boring. (laughs) I mean, it was all like memorize these factoids of when these battles happened and who marched from where and what uniforms they wore and the cannonballs and the muskets and just all this minutia. But on the back of the book, uh, you'll see, Kyle, we got the quote. You've all heard it. Those who don't learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. And we all know that quote. And yet we are not teaching kids about history to learn from it. We're simply teaching them to learn about it. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a difference with a distinction. Just right? memorize it. Yeah, You'll just, want it later. Yeah, we don't know why. On, it'll be on just, the just test. You need to know these dates. <laughs> it'll be that's on right. the test. And you guys probably saw this, this uh, news uh, blip that came out a few weeks ago that the nation's report card came out and said that only 13% of eighth graders are proficient when it comes to American history. Mm. One, one, three, 13%. And so my contention is that's because the textbooks they're using are horrible. The, the way they're being taught history is horrible. It's all just, yeah, it's, it's memorize this crap for the test. There's no, there's no context. There's no focus on ideas and mm-hmm. why stuff that happened 250 years ago, sh- you know, matters to us today. And the schools can't answer that question. It's just we're required to teach you this. And so memorize it and we're going to test you on it. So the idea with the books is let's use storytelling to teach the ideas of the past that Yes, happened and and motivated these people hundreds of years ago to do what they did, but those same ideas are relevant today. And so if we can give kids an opportunity to learn through story about those ideas in the context of 250 years ago, at the end of every chapter, we're like, okay, hey, we just talked about this, let's say, division, you know, between people and this combativeness. Let's talk about a modern example of that. And then they can start to see like, oh, that thing that happened has, you know, relevance to our world today so that we can hopefully help these kids to start learning from history so that you and I and everyone else doesn't have to keep repeating the mistakes of the past because these kids are all being seduced by the the siren song of socialism. If you don't want your kids to be socialists, pre-order the next go. title textbook. I think that's probably true there. for most of us, I would say, yeah. that are listening. Most good parents, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, uh, I mean, but yeah. for sure, parents are going to get a lot out of it. Hey, we've got a quiz for oh, you. Oh, yeah, we've got quizzes. Awesome. Quizzes this is, are great. I this is quizzes. the American history quiz. So yeah. No. Don't, don't get 13% I, I will, I will proficiency. Yeah. to yeah. Connor. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. He just got done writing is, a book about this. This is how we're going to do it. Um, Daniel, you're going to answer first. Oh, God. <laughs> and then Connor's going to answer. <laughs> yes, this is awesome. Number one, who was the first president of the United States in Congress assembled? George Washington, James Madison, John Hancock, or John Hanson? This is to me? <laughs> yeah. In Congress assembled? That's what the question says. I didn't write the question. I, I'm like, is know. that a qualifier that's supposed to throw me off? I'm, I'm going to say George Washington is the first president of the United right. States. What okay. do you think, Connor? Uh, yeah, George Washington, first president. The answer is John, John Hanson, Hanson, actually. Oh, are we really? talking Continental Congress? Just Was that in a... Congress assembled. Uh, in uh, Congress they're, assembled. They're talking oh, through a curveball. Yeah, yeah, continental yeah. That's Congress. so funny. I, but an African I'm swallow. I'm going this quiz. <laughs> African or we'll, we'll, European we'll swallow. We'll get you a copy of the book, too. <laughs> yeah. so oh, can... Is it in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too, I doubt one. it's in there. What were George Washington's false teeth made out of? Rocks, wood, B. hippopotamus, ivory, and cow's teeth, or marshmallows? <laughs> so, <laughs> wood was one of the things that they were potentially made out of. I guess there's other things, but yeah. All right. Wood, but my recollection is the teeth were ivory, so I feel like it's B and C. Okay. Uh, uh, wow, hippopotamus, ivory, and cow's teeth. <laughs> there you go. Hippopotamus, ivory, and cow's teeth that were attached with springs. 
Yeah, that's spring. right. I do like it, like your guys' shoes. Exactly. Yeah. The Gosh, that's amazing. The technology hasn't changed. I'm just not going to answer. <laughs> teeth, shoes. <laughs> For teeth. Did we mention the shoes on the podcast or is that going to be a... Oh, that's going to be a weird thing. So they wear this, they're wearing the same they shoes. They told us their shoes have springs. <laughs> we'll get Kizzix yeah. to sponsor the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the episode. Yeah, there we go. Let's call them up. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can I read this one? Here we go. Yeah. Number three. What was the first... Hey, oh, you're not... Yeah, you're not cheating. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, what was the Cheater. first battle of the American War for Independence in 1775? A, the Battle of Jenkins' Ear which my other character's name is Mayor Jenkins. I just want to point out. Lovely. B, the Battle of Bunker Hill. C, Lexington and Concord. D, the Battle of Corned Beef Wallace. Um, I think it's Lexington and Concord. Okay. Lexington, that's C. Confirmed. Okay. All right. Yes. The Concord is correct. I was there last week. I got Were one you really? right. Filming some videos for Let the book launch. <laughs> well, that's oh, amazing. That's great. That's very it was cool. amazing. It was a cool place. There is that no is battle cool. for Jenkins here, but there is a war of Jenkins here, which yeah. is one of the most interesting things. That is mm. really it's my cool. favorite war. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, well, really briefly, what is the war? Of I Jenkins believe it was an English guy. What are you talking about? There was an English guy. That, <laughs> there was an English guy that got kidnapped by Spanish navies or whatever, and they cut his ear off and sent it to the king. Oh. As like a sign or whatever, so they started a war over this. So it's the War of Jenkins' Ear. What wow. year was that? So it was like er, like early 1770s or something. It was in there ish. Oh, interesting. And I could be wrong. Literally on your favorite war. Yeah, I hope, that is the hottest war. I hope there's Very more. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this one? All right. Who's All the right. best American president ever? A. Abraham Lincoln. B. Barack Obama. Or C. Joe Biden. Come on, man. No one ever got 81 million votes before. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> those are the only options. I, I'm gonna. I, those are my only options. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna create a D. <laughs> I was just about to say I'm libertarian. Don't tell me what to do. D. None of the above. <laughs> the answer is Barack Obama. Of course. <laughs> okay. And the actual answer. Did is, Chat GPT create this quiz for you? <laughs> <laughs> actual answer is Ron Paul, though. Okay. Yeah, okay. I would have accepted that as well. Oh, would have Ron Paul. Been an he would have been great. We'll give you guys in. a half point on. Yeah, that. half point. All right. Okay. All right. Due to an oversight, which state was not officially admitted? to the union as a state until 1953 a alaska b hawaii c oregon d ohio e south carolina f detroit and we could keep going <laughs> and, <laughs> and, like so many and colorado <laughs> due to an oversight that's a weird yeah i don't know yeah. see see this says 1776 to 1791 <laughs> yeah. that, that's that when my yet. that's when my historical knowledge there. cuts off so far uh, if I were to guess, so 1950s, I mean, that's kind of when Hawaii became a state. So I'll say Hawaii. I was going to guess why. That makes sense. The oversight thing is there was a, Somebody yeah. didn't turn in the paperwork. Yeah. No, it's it's actually it's Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> it was a big oversight. Uh, like a tremendous um, oversight. That's a crazy oversight. It's yeah. just sitting there hanging out. So people it says grew up in Ohio all, in the, the early. The should have been declaring war on Ohio. They yeah. They were intruders. It says that they were not. <laughs> it says that their constitution wasn't officially recognized by the federal government until Dwight Eisenhower. Oh, my Who then post dated their statehood back to 1803. Oh, post date. <laughs> you just uh, said, you've been a state this yeah, whole post-date. time. Yeah, post date. Yeah. Post date. Avoided a war. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that. I, I like Ike. Yeah. All right. In what year did America fake the moon landing? <laughs> <laughs> 1955, 1963, 1969, or 1812? Ooh, 1812. That's a good curveball. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, 1969. Didn't he say by the end of the decade we would put a man on the moon? So I'm going to say 69. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to agree with my yeah 69. Correct here. answer. Good work. Yes. Same year as as Woodstock. Faked in 1969. It was like we June, landed on the moon. <laughs> it was like June 20 something. Oh, uh -huh. 69. That's good. Oh yeah, this is this question is worth 46 points. Uh oh, and the title. All right. So okay. So name all the presidents in chronological order. With commentary. With commentary? Go. Go. I'm, I'm reminded of like that Animaniacs thing where you like memorize the states. United States. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, <laughs> William Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Mill Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Jackson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes. Chester Garfield. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, I, there's no commentary, so I'm failing. No, no. Right, no <laughs> I want the going. full first. We're, no, we're all in <laughs> okay. Keep going. Oh, no, I got thrown off now. There's a song that goes with this. So yeah, I'm that's trying all to get right. back oh. You got to Lincoln and then. This uh, is Grant, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, and James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, 
um, Benjamin Harrison, uh, Cleveland, once again, um, William Harrison, uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, no, I don't know. You okay, can claim well, the title. Okay. It is all yours. I feel like you got through the hard ones and then you gave up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like after that, must be like, no, I like the last hundred years you got. Yeah, um, what was that? What's uh, from Teddy Roosevelt, wasn't it? So beyond. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, you get to like Woodrow Wilson, and after that, everybody knows most. Calvin of Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover. Uh, yeah, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, and was it Truman? Grace Truman? Dwight D. Eisenhower? Like he's looking at us. Um, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm getting a little. Wow. Yeah, well, I had we'll, it. Once we'll give you time. full credit. I think. That's. I think you. You. <laughs> yeah. Forty six points for sure. Yeah. And the and, title. And he could have just made, make or them all 75%. Up. I, mean, I think Daniel has like the Neuralink, you know, brain implant yeah. already ready <laughs> like, to go. It's hold like, on, let me access. This, yeah. this is this is coming from a homeschool song. So yeah. that's where it's, it's, it's what I can remember of it. There you go. Homeschool kids. Boom. It looked like yeah. he was stealing signs. He was like glancing. Yeah. What's going on? Gosh. Something. Wow, that's great. No, that's great. Oh, well, that, that we'll was... give you points for commentary if you guys can give us your uh, five best presidents. Yeah. Five oh. best. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to go with Washington is obviously one of them. Um, I'm going to go as far as like actually knowing the accomplishments of them. I mean, uh, John Adams, I think, too. Um, I'm going to have to go with Calvin Coolidge is one of the best. Um, man, I don't have a high regard for a lot of presidents, I'm realizing. <laughs> um I got three. Can you JFK, top me off with JFK, the other two? JFK is oh, on my JFK, list. JFK, yeah. You know. He, Why is JFK uh, on your list? Uh, among other reasons, uh, he shot down Operation Northwoods, which was an attempt by the Joint Chiefs of Staff to militarily, uh, to, to, to bomb American cities and shoot Americans and kill them and blame it on the Cubans as a false flag to incite the American public to go to war in Cuba at the time the the polling did not show that uh, Americans wanted to invade Cuba despite all the contention that was happening. So literally the Joint Chiefs of Staff came up with a plan where they would kill Americans, blame it on Cuba, try and get people to to support going to war and then invade Cuba. JFK shot it down. I so. like the standard for being a good president is like not, not murder. Don't people. murder the kids. Yeah, like, don't start. Don't start a war. Don't, <laughs> preventing don't the military kill lots of people. <laughs> from murdering people. Well, which is that kind of leads you to believe that maybe this has happened multiple times in our history. Like you know, presidents have. We're actually working, false flag things. We're working like, on a book right now that I'll have out later this year for teenagers. We have a whole like guidebook <clears> series of books for teens, and this one is going to be called the Tuttle Twins Guide to True Conspiracies. Mm. And every chapter is going to be something like Operation Northwood saying, Whoa. like, you know, moon landing did not make the cut. That that might be in uh, that actually volume, volume two, right? But, <laughs> but no, these are all like like Operation Northwoods, for example. There's declassified memos. You can read exactly Crazy. what they were proposing. And so to your exact point, like you look at stuff, oh, yeah, they only did that back in the 60s. Like, no, who would be so deluded to uh, think about that? Just today, uh, when we're recording this, they had the, what's the guy's name, the memo come out after the four-year investigation of uh, the intelligence community trying to create a, a link between Trump and Russia, right? Mm -hmm. And so you had all these intelligence operatives conspiring to try and weaponize the FBI and DOJ. And so, I don't know, I think tons of this stuff like that still happens and we'd be naive to think that it doesn't. So anyways, JFK is on my list. I assume most things, I'm at this place now in my life where I assume most of the things I hear in the news are something like this. Safe like, assumption. is that true for me? Is it's that true it's for you too guys? often, now, yeah, especially like, now, the recency of how quickly, you know, things that we're told, no, can't be true, don't believe it, that kind of thing. And all of a sudden it's like, no, it's definitely true. Right. <laughs> kind of, and it's- It's like two weeks now. Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That window is closing to where it's like, oh man. I just read the Babylon B prophecies and then I know what's gonna be coming out <laughs> of the next three weeks. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this seems crazy, but give it a few weeks and then it'll be real. <laughs> yeah, you guys in The Simpsons, right? You've got yeah, you know, that's the right. prophetic ones. Yeah, good comedy, good comedy. It's, yeah, hanging it's right true. There. It's, you know, The Simpsons used to write a joke and then 20 years later it would come true. Yeah. Like they had that famous one where it was like, Disney owns Fox. Uh -huh. you know, and then it came true like yeah. 15 or 20 years later. Yeah. And now it's like, true. we read a Press joke time and it's true a, week, a week later. Yeah. So yeah. you guys give us your four best presidents. Fifth yeah. is obviously Trump, so we don't need to. <laughs> goes without saying. It <laughs> goes without <laughs> saying. He clearly drained the swamp. So any, oh plan, any plans for an episode where the Tuttle Twins meet Ron Paul? Ooh. Voiced by Ron Paul. Um, I, would, I, I personally obviously. would love to do an episode with, with that. We've, we've done a little bit of reaching out. 
and um, haven't heard anything back. To lately. use the idea, yeah. So I yeah, totally would be open to it if he uh-huh. if he was down. I would that'd be great. I don't know if he would get it, like the jokes and the humor and stuff. I'm not, I don't know. We could give him a small role. I think Rand Paul, George yeah, Washington's yeah, yeah. my date option. We tried to interview. He's very funny. Well, we did actually. interview Ron you Paul. You did one interview time. him. Interviewed, yeah. It was like dream of my life interview yeah. Ron Paul, and it was uh-huh. great. But he does doesn't get the jokes. Yeah. Like we were asking him where That's he buries right. his gold, <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, uh, you know. I don't know. <laughs> a little too serious. Didn't know so what to do with it. Well, I didn't know what to do. I don't have any gold. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We we interviewed Rand Paul. Directly after interviewing you guys at Freedom Fest last year, yeah. he was yeah. a good interview, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, was very great. Good. Yeah. He's, yeah. He was right with us. He was a sharp guy. Yeah. yeah, sharp guy. Yeah, yeah. His wife's a sharp he gets lady. The humor. Yeah, yeah. He does get the humor. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we were messing with him. Yeah. He was like, yeah. Ron, he was cool with it. Ron, a bit of a letdown a after interviewing thinker. you guys, though. Yeah, that's like, true. I mean, like it was no. Yeah, that's okay. true. We yeah. can't all achieve greatness. <laughs> big, shorter. Big set of uh, <laughs> shoes to fill. Exactly. <laughs> Kizik <laughs> shoes. <to be> <laughs> Kizik's. Kizik's. Use Don't code Babylon B for 10% off. <laughs> but this is good. Not actually. So when will the Tuttle Twins have an episode where they learn about the right to have a nuclear-powered generator in their garage to power their marijuana grow operation and defend it with <laughs> AR-15s? Yeah, that's in July. <laughs> oh, yeah. coming out. <laughs> Spot on. So, how wow. did you know? You must be spying on our writing room yeah. and knowing no, what we're just, talking about. We're profits. We have jokes all the time in the writer's room about when we're going to do our Second Amendment episode in a kid's show. We're like, yeah, maybe we'll just table that one for a while. We'll see. If, you, if Connor can figure it out it'd first be, it with the books. Me- it'd be a metaphor. It's yeah. a weird line to walk to try and like push a principle or an idea that you think might not be totally your audience might not be totally receptive to yeah. but you want them to be you know and so how do you like figure out the adjacent idea to where their comfort zone is and then push them a little bit but have them receive it well, well and then, and then you're, you're teaching some core principles right like yeah. personal liberty and the right to your property and and that that it, it does follow that you'd have the right to defend your property you right. know? so if you get get people on board with that stuff then second amendment kind of follows. or that your body is your own property right, right. so if you yeah. want to ingest a certain plant then who's the government to stop you but we're not going to say the Tuttle the... twins and the pot shop you know <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah there's a way to those things it's just a question of like how much do we do in a kids show right as opposed right. like the 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 critical thinking exercise of the arguments for and against are all you know great fun it's just like how, are those the battles we want to fight in a kids well and stuff, I, there's right? also this idea where i can get away with a little bit more in the books than yeah. we can in the cartoon because sure. the books we can go deeper into ideas whereas the cartoon we have to simplify and say what are like the two or three concepts that we're trying to teach mm. and then build out all the humor and you know story around it and so it's lighter on pushing ideas in the cartoon than it is uh, in the books yeah we kind of have one <laughs> main principle that we're trying to get across per episode and mm-hmm. then everything else into there is a support to it, both the story as well as the, you know, sort of other bullet points within that that we're hitting. But the yeah, the books are much, much more of a deep dive into the education. Which and do you really just nice. do you just come up with a concept or you have you have a principle that you're trying to teach and then you then you get your comedians in a room and you just kind of say, How do we do this? Is is that yeah, so it starts it starts with Connor. So he's an executive uh, producer on the show as well. And we sit down and we say, okay, here's some of the subjects that we want to hit in this season. And we go through and identify the different principles. And then Connor helps kind of flush out the different ways that we can teach that, like different historical figures that we could visit, um, things that he knows from uh, writing history books and <laughs> other books about like the ways that we could go about approaching the subject. And then when we get when we get that kind of all um, concrete and down to like our bullet points, then we go into the writer's room with, you know, the storytellers, comedians. And we say, if, if they forget everything else, what is the one thing we want them to take away and kind of start from that point. Mm -hmm. And then the story needs to flow out of that. Meaning the, the historical figure that we go to the, you know, imaginary world or dimension that they fly off to, to kind of apply the principle or the, problem that they that the Tuttle Twins encounter in their own world yeah. needs to all kind of be born out of that one teaching that we're trying to get across. And we usually try to distill it down to a principle that we can capture in a, a bumper sticker, mm-hmm. um, something like inflation hurts a nation, you know, was one example. Right. And it's something that we can repeat 
several times throughout the episode. So um, uh, some other ones are disagree doesn't mean enemy. You know, we have an episode that's on how if you disagree with someone, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you're on team bad and I'm on team good. That's right. Um, I don't and, understand. <laughs> it's exactly. the George it's the Washington. Christian that will help you understand. <laughs> it's that's the George right. Washington episode. <laughs> right. And then on the Bitcoin one that we just did, it was when money's easy to um, easy to create the society. Get, when 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 yeah when uh, money is easy to create society begins to break and um it doesn't rhyme as well well i know and i i think i did it wrong You're comedians not <laughs> that's funny um <laughs> but there's i mean there's there's other ones like the only rights we're entitled to are the ones that don't force others to work for you and so that's what we're trying to get to is that so kind B, of thing. B minus? Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just going to That's a good, that's, <laughs> a, well, that's a good, that's we'll a good episode. just go down the list, Kyle, and see I if like we can get I like the inflation one. The inflation one was yeah, solid. It's inflation yeah. hurts a nation. I'm like, that's, that's right. And disagree doesn't mean enemy. I, you didn't like that no, one? That's you hated good. it because you just disagreed Disagree. with it. Disagree. isn't great, but doesn't I don't understand. Mean. Yeah, the main thing is I don't understand it. That's right. Anyway, that's right. So yeah, it all starts with what we're going to teach. And then from there, the rest of the concepts for the episode flow out of that. How many people in your writer's room? Um, it's usually four of us. So it starts technically five because we start with the education side of it with Connor. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's myself and then three other writers. And three so other I'll, writers. I'll come in after they've done like a first draft and I'll review how they kind of synthesize the, the concept. Like, oh, hey, we got to explain it a little bit differently or you didn't quite capture it here. And then, you know, all the poop jokes I kind of laugh at and say, are we going to keep Safe any of these? Let's get rid of some of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's kind of an iterative process, process on my side just to make sure that we're teaching the principles the right way. Because they can make a funny show with these comedians and just have a blast. But the core proposition here is we're trying to teach the, the principles of a free society. So we have kind of a few touch points along the way with each episode where we can make sure that the – that the concepts are landing the right way and and uh, then go from there. Yeah, Connor's a master at that. He'll, he'll actually go through and we've kind of assembled the story and got the lesson in there and everything. And then we'll go, okay, okay, Connor, did we do it right? And he'll be like, well, this isn't actually portraying what it needs to here. And this yeah. needs to be adjusted. And it's just so, so fast and so, so smart the way he approaches that. So, so Connor's really kind of like Kyle. So like we'll sure. write, we'll write a sketch and Kyle will go through and be like, yeah, this doesn't land. This doesn't it's, land. This doesn't land. It's, it's like the close <laughs> starters are, that comes. You guys in are and you're unfunny. Like, no, 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 no. So on the, right. on the on the education side of that, a hundred percent Connor is, and I'm more of That's that cool. Kyle on more of like the. Oh, joke, so you're, the on, the, you're on the comedy side. Well, and I also have yeah. Basically, if it's not working for me, it usually doesn't get through. Mm -hmm. But there are times when I see it's clearly working for everybody else. And I'll kind of let it slide through oh, because it's yeah. not objectionable to be Absolutely no. not. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now your writer team, your writer's team is uh comedians. Are they from like Studio C? Or are they from other yeah, places? They've, like we've got Yeah, they've Jen, written is, is for who, who did Drive I just Bar. Work? Yeah, Drive Bar Comedy. Drive Bar Comedy. Yeah, Studio right. C. Okay. All right. Um they've written I mean, we have um, a writer that's helped out on Ted Lasso. We've got oh, cool. Uh, writers that are, you know, just uh, like I said, a lot, a lot of sketch comedy, a lot of stand up. I mean, uh, Kellen Erskine's one of our writers. And he's Kellen Erskine, of, yeah. Alex Elkin. Yeah. He plays Derek too, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, oh. Alex is more just a voice. Okay. Right? He's a yeah, voice. He, we haven't had him in the writer's room yet, but um, yeah, we've actually kind of flirted with that idea a little bit because he's submitted you to You should keep flirting with points. Alex. We like him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He's very funny. So yeah. Alex is extremely first. funny. He yeah. was in a sketch with us where we're all in drag. It was one of my <laughs> he least. Was all one of my he least. was like, there's a sketch with drag? Can I <laughs> be a part in. of this? In. <laughs> I'm in. And I was like, it's my least favorite sketch Usually ever. Usually you, <laughs> you have to I coax mean, people. Because I'm wearing not. a dress. I hate it. The Satan cape. Yeah, yeah does, does I'm perfectly better, fine right? with dressing up like the devil. A woman, not a woman, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alex is amazing as a voice actor. Like he's oh, got yeah. so much range. He can do so many different characters. I think he's already been at least probably six different characters in the show. Mm -hmm. And then he's also really good when we're in the recording session uh, about improv yeah, right. and that's, kind that's of a good plusing our jokes. Yeah. You know. It's yeah, great. that's great. It's a great value. That's to have, great. Bro. Yeah. Awesome. That's well, so Well, you guys cool. are doing great work with Tuttle Twins. Everybody go check it out. So what's the current status? So they can fund season two now? Is that... Or what's, um, or they can help us fund already? season three. Fund season three. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, there's the ability within the Angel app to pay it forward, um, which is great. Anytime they buy um, any of uh, the merch, like the graphic novels, T-shirts, um, plushy toys, that helps go towards funding uh, season three. 
and um, yeah, just like spread the word because usually people that are listening to this, they they know they're people that want something like the yeah. Twins. And now it's, uh, I, I, the angel model, sometimes I'm not sure where it all lives. Does so can people watch season two? now or when it's when it comes out yeah so we're releasing an episode a month right now and it comes out on the angel app and all yep. that and it comes out on the angel app we have Tuttle tuesdays which is the first tuesday oh. of each month we live stream it so then live turn it into a whole fun thing for the kids to watch yep. and yeah it's available all for free all season one is available for free and then the first episode three episodes are available for free right now on the angel app. oh great okay yeah awesome that's right very cool check that's it out if great. you don't want your kids to become commies <laughs> commie <laughs> pinkos coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. My first job that I have a recollection of was hoeing beets. You sounded, lived on a, 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 beet, like, a beet farm? It sounded like a hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> hoeing sick beets. No, I, I true got... Genesis story of the Harmon Brothers. Yeah. Child labor. <laughs> I love that song and I use it for karaoke because if I'm going to wait in line, <laughs> I want to have the longest time Put on a milk stage. In, huh? Yes, <laughs> that I can get. So I was, I was in a ska band. This has been another edition of the Babylon Bee Podcast. From the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee, reminding you that Ron Paul was right.